Hi everyone, thanks for joining our channel and tuning in. Um, we hope you enjoy all the stories and uh, poems and things that we've got prepared for you on story time for some time with the family. Um, I wanted to read a little chapter from my most favourite book from when I was a wee girl. It's from a trilogy of books called The Magic Faraway Tree by Enid Blyton. And this is the first book called The Enchanted Wood. Anyone can enjoy it and it's most certainly for people who believe in magic and love uh, fantasy and fairies and anything mythical uh, like that and adventure. Um, there's quite a few chapters in this book so I'll just read a couple of them just now and if you guys want me to read more I can totally do that for you or if you want to check out the book yourself and read it at your own leisure that's totally cool whatever whatever you guys want to do. Okay so here we go chapter one how they found the magic wood. There were once three children called Joel and Beth and Franny. All their lives they had lived in a town, but now their father had a job in the country, so they were all to move as soon as possible. What fun to be in the country, said Joel. I shall learn all about animals and birds, and I shall learn to pick as many flowers as I can, said Beth, and I shall have a garden of my very own, said Franny. When the day came for the move, all of the children were excited. A small van came to their door and two men helped their father and mother pile everything into it. When it was full, the van drove away and the children put on their coats and hats to go with their mother to catch a train to the station. Now we're off, said Joe. The country, the country, said Beth. We might see fairies there, said Franny. The train whistled and chuffed out of the station. The children pressed their noses to the window and watched the dirty houses and chimneys race by. How they hated the town. How lovely it would be to be in the clean country with flowers growing everywhere and birds singing in the hedges. We might have adventures in the country, said Joe. There will be streams and hillsides, big fields and dark woods. Oh, it will be lovely. You won't have any more adventures in the country than you will have in the town, said their father. I dare say you will find it all very dull. But that's where he was quite wrong. My goodness, the things that happened to those children. They arrived at last at the tiny station where they were to get out. A sleepy looking porter took their bags onto a trolley and he said he'd bring them along later. Off they all went down the winding country lane, chattering loudly. I wonder if we've got a garden, said Franny. But before they reached their new home, they were tired out. They could not bother to say another word to each other. Their cottage was five miles from the station, and as the children's father could not afford to do anything but walk there, it seemed a very long way indeed. There was no bus to take them, so the tired children dragged their feet along, wishing for a glass of warm milk and a cosy bed. At last they got there. Oh, dear me, it was worth the walk for the cottage was sweet. Roses hung from the walls, red and white and pink, and honeysuckle was all round the front door. It was lovely. The van was at the door and the two men were moving all the furniture into the little house. Father helped whilst mother went to light the kitchen stove to make them all a hot drink. They were so tired. They could do nothing but drink the hot milk, eat some toast and tumble into their roughly made beds. Joe looked out of the window, but he was too sleepy to see properly. In one minute, the two girls in their small room were asleep, and Joe too in his even tinier room. <laughs> what fun it was to wake up in the morning and see the sun shining in at the strange windows. It didn't take Joe, Beth and Franny very long to dress. Then they were out into the little garden, running through the grass that had grown so long and smelling the roses that grew all around. Mother had cooked fresh eggs for them and they ate their breakfast hungrily. It's lovely to be in the country, said Joe, looking out of the window to the faraway hills. We could grow vegetables in the garden, said Beth. There will be loads of glorious walks all around, said Franny. That day, everyone helped to get the little house straight and tidy. Father was going to work the next day. Mother hoped there would be someone to give her washing to do. Then she could make enough money to buy a few hens. That would be lovely. I shall collect the eggs each morning and evening, said Franny happily. 
let's go out and see what the country round about is like, said Joe. Can you spare us for an hour, mother? Yes, run along then, said mother. So off the children went, out of the tiny white front gate and into the lane. They explored all around, all across the fields where the pink clover was full of bees. They paddled in a small brown stream that chattered away to itself under the willow trees in the sunshine. And then they suddenly came to the wood. It it was not far from the cottage at the back. It looked quite an ordinary wood, except that the trees were a little darker than usual. A narrow ditch separated the wood from the overground lane. A wood, said Beth in delight. We should be able to have picnics in here. It's a rather mysterious sort of wood, said Joe thoughtfully. Don't you think so, Beth? Well, the trees are rather thick, but they seem about the same as any others, said Beth. They don't quite, said Franny. The noise the leaves make is different. Listen. They listened. Franny was right. The leaves of the trees in the wood did not rustle in quite the same way as other trees did nearby. It's almost as if they're really talking to one another, said Beth, whispering secrets that we just can't understand. It's a magic wood, said Franny. Nobody said anything. They just stood and listened. Wisha, 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 said the trees in the wood. And they bent towards one another in a friendly way. There might be fairy folk in there, said Beth. Shall we jump over the ditch and go in? No, said Joe. We might get lost. Let's find our way around before we go into big woods like this. Joe, Beth, Franny. Suddenly their mother's voice came from the cottage not far off. It's time for lunch. Oh, the children felt hungry all at once. (laughs) They forgot about the strange wood and ran back to their home. Mother had new bread with strawberry jam for them and they ate a whole loaf between them. (laughs) Father came in as they were finishing. He had been shopping for mother in the village three miles away and he was hungry and tired. We've been exploring everywhere, Father, said Beth, pouring him a big cup of tea. We found a lovely wood, said Joe. The trees really seem to be talking to one another, Father. That must be the wood I've heard about this afternoon, said Father. It has a strange name, children. What's it called, said Joe. It's called the Enchanted Wood, said their father. People don't go there if they can help it. It's funny to hear things like this nowadays, and I don't expect there is anything strange about this wood, but just be careful not to go too far into it, in case you get lost. The children looked in excitement at one another. The Enchanted Wood. What a lovely name. And each child secretly thought the same thought. I shall go and explore the enchanted wood as soon as ever I can. Their father set them to work in the overgrown garden once they'd finished their meal. Joe had to pull up through the thistles and the two girls had to weed the untidy vegetable bed. They spoke to each other in joyful voices. The enchanted wood. We knew there was something magical about it. I guess there were fairies there, said Franny. We'll do some more exploring as soon as we can cried Beth. We'll find out about those whispering trees, what they're saying. We'll know all the secrets of the wood before many weeks are past. And that night at bedtime, all three stood at the window, looking out on the dark, whispering wood behind the cottage. What would they find in the enchanted wood? <laughs>